Let's use IntelliTrace to debug the intermittent bug that I showed you in the previous demo. It's still running here under my debugger, and it's still showing my wrong answer. 3 plus 5 plus 2 plus 1 is not 10. So I'm going to click on Visual Studio to bring it into focus and click Break All. Now you can see here down the side in this IntelliTrace pane a recording of all the different interactions that I did with the system. I clicked Get Data, then I clicked Refresh Total, and I did that over and over again because the intermittent bug, thanks to Murphy's Law, wasn't showing up for a while. If you're not sure which is oldest to newest in the IntelliTrace pane, and if you can't tell because of this pattern, you can see down here the last one says that there was a live event was that I actually broke the debugger. And so this refresh total is the last one. So if I double click it, quite often it'll come up and say no source available like this. This is no big panic, simply that when the user clicked the refresh total button, the code that immediately ran was the WPF event handling stuff, and we didn't capture IntelliTrace from inside those Microsoft system assemblies. If I just click go to next event, we end up here in the code. You can tell by its name, Refresh Total Click, that this is the button handler for when somebody clicks that button. Now let's see what it does. You can see up above that we're putting text boxes, number one, number two, and number three, to some properties, one, two, and three, of an object called internal data. And here, we're getting a hold of internal data.total and adding in your number. So this all seems to make good sense. It doesn't look completely ridiculous. And the obvious question has got to be, what are these values? What is internal data.total? What is number one? And so on. If I hover over them here, they tend to come up as unknown because they're not always captured. Controls and those sorts of things state. So here, I can't get the information that I want. But that doesn't mean I can't get it at all. We have this extra margin when you're running under IntelliTrace. This shows you the line that you're not about to execute, but whose values you're about to look at in your IntelliTrace. And you're supposed to think of it the way as you would the next statement in the debugger. And these are your controls for equivalent to step out of, step into, and so on. I can go back to where I came. It's grayed out because there really isn't anywhere I came. I can step in a little further, or I can run out to the next event that would be here in the IntelliTrace pane. I'm going to choose to go in. And when I do that, one of the things that happens is down here in the autos window, it points out that the data total is 9. OK, and I typed 1 in the year number, 9 and 1 is 10. That's why I displayed 10 on the screen. So now I know there's a problem with the way that this total is being calculated. The answer shouldn't be 9, it should be 10, according to what I saw on the screen. So I can further step in. Now I find myself in a different file, data.cs, which is a class with these three numbers in it and some properties that represent access to the three numbers and this total property that adds them up. Now, I told you there could be a really good reason why this application went and got three numbers. When the database did some sophisticated analysis, made a bunch of web calls, this app gets some random numbers. Pretend that that was something really good, because that's not the bug. The bug is to do with how we add them up versus how we bring them back as properties. So I can now hover over any one of these and get a data tip, which I can pin in place. I'm just going to shrink the IntelliTrace window a little so you can see. There's my pin tip. And I'll do num2. And I'll do num3. So if you look at these three numbers, and they came out on the screen as 3, 5, and 2, which I added up and said, OK, that's 10, and one more makes 11. But they're not 3, 5, and 2. Right? These are doubles. And if you do as this code does and add them up and then round them, that's why it gets 9. Now, it would be great if I could use, say, the immediate window and say, what is 
uh, num1 plus num2 plus num3. Can't evaluate expressions while in Teletrace. I'll just scroll it for you. Debugging. Oh, okay, you can say to yourself, that's fine. Uh, I'll just put in the numbers. Uh, we'll, we just need a couple of digits of accuracy, 2.58 plus 4.9, uh, 2.7, so I'll say 3, plus 1.7, it's 8.6, so I'll say 9. Again, cannot evaluate expressions while in Teletrace debugging. No worries, we have a calculator, right? So let's put those in this way, 2.58 plus 4.93 plus 1.79. 9.3, which not surprisingly gets rounded to 9. And then when we add 1 on, we see 10 on the screen. So this is totally a buck, right? The properties are rounding them all individually, but the total is adding them up and then rounding the total. What's the solution to the bug? Could be many things. Could be keep them as integers. What are you doing rounding them and then keeping more accurate uh, sub-elements that you can add up and cause a, a bug with, why do they even need to be doubles? It could be stop returning integers, return them as doubles rounded to two or three decimal places and show that on the UI. Exactly how to fix the bug is a slightly different issue, but we've discovered the bug by waiting until it happened and then coming back and looking at the values. And just in the nothing up my sleeve department, I'm going to widen out the IntelliTrace window a little bit more so you can see I can go back to any one of these other events in which I refresh the total. Let's try the very first one. And using this same step in, find myself here in total again with the pinned values still there and now you see with different values than the 2.58, 4.93 and 1.79 that I had before. These are the values from the very first time that I ran it. I can go back to any point over this history and take a look at the values. Of course, real intermittent bugs might only show up every hundred times, which is why it's so convenient to have to only start debugging and looking around once the bug has actually happened.